All right, guys, so we're back with the second episode in eScouting British Columbia. In this episode, we're going to look at how you can identify local zones where animals can be found. Um, IMAPBC has, it, it's a very powerful tool um, in what it allows you to do. It does have its limitations, though, um, as you'll see in this video. There is a lot of historical data that we'll be going through uh, as to where the animals are located. Um, but it may be slightly dated uh, between five, possibly ten years. Uh, with that being said, this is still relevant because animals, unless they're significantly um, disturbed, they'll still remain in a general area as long as there is the basic um, essentials for their survival, such as food, water, uh, as well as their ability to protect themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into data sources, add provincial layers. And as soon as this loads up, we will go and scroll down to fish, wildlife, and plant species. And we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom, select this one, and click ungulates. Now, there's also an option for predators, so you could look for black bears, um, as well as a lot of trapping species. Um, but in this particular case, we're just going to look at this for right now. Now, as we zoom in, we will see a whole bunch of dots appearing. There's green dots, brown dots, blue dots, um, as well as yellow dots further up here. Now, what does this really identify? Well, we can go into the side here, into my layers, click this bar, show legend. And this will show you um, the animal that the color correlates with. Green is elk, uh, brown would be mule deer, and blue, this one over here, would be white-tailed deer. Now you can go to each of these dots individually, right-click them, and click Find Data on Map, and it will give you uh, a little bar that you can click on here. Now if you scroll down, it'll say the observation date and time. It was at uh, 7.30, roughly, at, uh, on November 23rd, 2010. Now, that's pretty dated. That's 10 years ago, but we can gather some data from this. Uh, we can look. It was the 11th month, um, and that's basically telling us that in November, an animal was spotted in this area. We can also click this one over here and see... When was this one sighted? November 25th at 8 o'clock in the morning. Interesting. So we have one over here that was at night, one over here that was in the morning. Uh, let's go down to this one right here. Find data point on the map. Um, click this, and it will say January 28th, 2009. So right now I'm seeing a pattern. And, you know, correlation does not necessarily mean causation, but... These two points are a little bit higher on the map. This one's lower. Perhaps uh, if we were to look into weather data, uh, historical weather data, we'd see that the animals are moving down the mountain um, with the colder weather. Just a curious point to, uh, to uh, show. So this historical data is useful, but how do you find the most recent sightings? Well, if we zoom out a little bit here, we can exit from this, click this bar again, and go to show buffer options. Go to a distance of 20 kilometers, press continue. And this is gonna highlight a circle with um, roughly a distance of 20 kilometers within it that uh, will bring up all the animals in that zone. Now, as you can see here, uh, these are all moose sightings. Now, what we want to do is click this bar, switch to table. Now, we can bring up the species that we wanna look at moose, elk, white-tailed deer. Um, these are the ones that appear to have the most recent sightings. We'll go with moose for this one. I'm going to scroll over to the side and you can see January 2009. That's a long time ago. So we're going to um, narrow down our observation here a little bit by clicking this button a couple of times. And here we go. We have a whole bunch of 2020 sightings on moose. Now we can check to see, these are all January, 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 
Um, let's go with peer. Most of these settings are in fact in January. Uh, here's December 2016. Okay. So what we're going to have to do for the most recent sightings, we're going to have to assume that um, the moose are going to be in a similar area through most of the winter, although they do move around quite a bit. Uh, we can use some of this data to assume that they'll be within this general area during the winter months. So let's click on this one. And we can see exactly the area where that moose was sighted. Uh, there was one moose found in this area at that period of time. Uh, down here, if we were to click this one, there's just happened to be two moose uh, that were seen in that area at that period of time. Um, again, you have the exact date, the exact time uh, of the sightings, as well as the field observer. In this case, it is not known. And this was a on, ongoing census of um, the population data. So we can assume that this is quite accurate and you can kind of sift through this information to see uh, where the animals are, where the most recent uh, data is for your particular area and the animal that you're looking for. So this can go with all the different animals that um, you might be hunting. Uh, and again, you can you can work through that right over here, uh, elk, white-tailed deer, etc. And you can apply this also to predators, as I said before, black bears, mountain lions, wolves. Uh, it can really narrow down your, your hunting area and give you an idea of where the animals are at a certain period of time. Um, if you'd like to see more information on this, if you'd really like to see how you can narrow down an area in particular as to where the animals are um, and working through the data to get a more quantitative approach. Um, I can certainly do that. Uh, just drop a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, I can be back with another video in no time. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.